staying true to our promise of transparency and accountability. This evening, I come to you with an update on your government's COVID-19 response agenda and plans. The impact of the total shutdown on our economy continues to be severe. According to reports conducted by the Small Business Bureau and the Private Sector Commission, business, businesses all across sectors saw various responses to the COVID-19 pandemic shutdown. Fellow Guyanese, I spent the last couple of weeks consulting with many stakeholders, the private sector, trade unions, representatives, youths, communities, healthcare professionals, all aimed at coming up with a national holistic plan that integrates every aspect of response in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic. So what we have seen is a closure of small business enterprises, our economy declined by more than 4% at mid-year, contraction in business by more than 20 to 70%, by between 20 to 70%. The loss of jobs in some cases reduced workforce significantly. Reduced operations and output due to the implementation of rotation work schedules. And importantly, the loss of income has led to starvation in many communities. And I want to say to those communities that your government is not unaware of the difficulties you're facing. That is why in this holistic plan, we're not only looking at the health aspect of the COVID-19 pandemic, but we are targeting measures that would recreate jobs, ensure income goes back to the people, improve spending in the economy, whilst at the same time securing our population with good health, with good health implement, implementation of good health scenarios. We all know that the last five months were spent on matters other than implementing a comprehensive and proactive COVID response. This government is focused on delivering an all-encompassing plan that would hold their health and safety paramount whilst balancing the need to fortify our economic standing. I assure you that your concerns will be dealt with, that the concerns of the business community, parents, teachers, the healthcare personnel, we will find a balance. We will take all of these concerns into consideration and find a balance in addressing this issue because it is not only a public health issue, but an economic, financial, and social issue. To this end, as a government, we have been working at implementing an approach that brings together all the stakeholders. The objective of our approach is to ensure the multifaceted aspect of the COVID-19 pandemic is addressed by delivering relief to our strained health system and workers, increasing testing throughout Guyana, maintaining and addressing public health and safe safety, delivering stimulus incentives and arrangements to encourage businesses stability, delivering relief measures to persons affected at the household level, and delivering education to our children in, in a non-conventional manner as we all adopt in this new environment. In addressing some of these issues, the government is pursuing the following. Resources is important. Notwithstanding the present state of our economy and the unavailability of resources, I announced a 4.5 billion allocation to assist in our COVID response. In addition, we are in the process of mobilizing approximately 60 million US dollars from the World Bank, OFID, IDB, and the Islamic Development Bank. This is in addition to the two million US grant received from the government of India. These are outside other bilateral support we have received are in the, and are in the process of receiving. 
As of this morning, Guyana recorded its 26th death from COVID-19. On behalf of the government and my family, I extend deepest condolences to the families of those who would have loved, of those who would have lost their loved ones. And I assure you that you are in my prayers and my family prayers. To tackle the ongoing challenges, the Minister of, of Health has advised that a number of interventions have been made to improve test on a wrong time, testing capability, human resource capacity, infrastructure and equipment. To this effect, the government has been able to move to a situation from which we had less than 10,000 N95 masks in the system two weeks ago to a current situation where we have approximately 65,000 N95 masks available and an additional 25,000 in order. Testing has moved from a position of 40 to 60 per day to 96 to 140 per day. Notwithstanding this significant improvement, there is a backlog of 700 test results. This is as a result of the manual PCR machines currently used and also the lack of medical technologists. Two weeks ago, we had one medical technologist working. By the end of this week, 30 new medical technologists will be trained in PCR testing from both the public and private sector and will be available from next week. In addition to this, two new automatic machines will be sourced to cut testing turnaround time from nine hours to two hours. This will not only clear the backlog, but significantly improve our capacity to do mass testing, which will become necessary in the eventual opening up of our economy and country. Additionally, we currently have four working ventilators at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. By next week, 29 additional ventilators will be in the country to be utilized not only at GPHC, but in all the regions of our country. The ministry has also advised that additional healthcare personnel, including doctors, has been deployed to hotspot areas in region seven and nine. Further, in dealing with the issues of isolation, the ministry would convert the inoperable infectious disease center to an isolation facility. To this end, arrangements are being made to have a facility that caters for 150 patients requiring isolation. I'm deeply concerned and recognize that our children have not been academically engaged in the traditional ways since March. We are particularly concerned about the impact of non-traditional school structures and also the unavailability of resources and infrastructure for children, especially in our hinterland. Our children with disabilities and our children who don't have access to data or internet. I've directed Minister Manichan to develop a plan to address the delivery of education to our children in a COVID-19 environment. After consultation with various stakeholders, it was decided that schools were not in a position from a public health, infrastructure, and facilities standpoint to facilitate a reopening in September. The minister has been asked to implement a comprehensive plan aimed at ensuring children and teachers remain engaged in learning. Whilst we'll make available 500 million to equip schools and provide COVID-19 support services and facilities for our children and teachers, the ultimate goal is to have our schools in a state of readiness at the earliest. In the interim, the ministry has been tasked to put the infrastructure in place for the delivery of the curriculum 
via the Learning Channel, state radio broadcasting, and privately owned media houses. While being a global health risk, COVID-19 poses serious financial threat. In our continued efforts to safeguard and strengthen the resilience of the sector, I've advised the Bank of Guyana to examine a number of measures. The governor has since advised me that in consultation with the Guyana Bankers Association, the following agreement has been met. The Bank of Guyana will extend the moratorium to December 2020 to allow banks to further defer customer payments to the end of December 2020 to cope with the low revenue generation needs to meet operational needs. This accommodation result in loans not being classified as non-performing and hence will not require loan loss provisioning. The Bank of Guyana will, re will relax section 14 and 15 of the supervision guidelines number five to December 2020. Additionally, a waiver is being given to section 13 of supervision guideline number five, the relaxation of stringent statutory measures is intended to result in direct benefits to customers of banks by giving the financial institutions the ability to operate with more flexibility. The Bank of Guyana will reduce liquidity requirements in two areas, lowering of the reserves requirement from 12% to 10%, lowering the liquid asset requirements for demand and deposit from 25% to 20%, and saving and time deposit from 10 to 15%. These measures will result in overall increased liquidity in the financial sector. The reduction in reserve requirement will result in injection of $9.4 billion, and the reduction in the liquid asset requirements will Im immediately release an estimated $23.3 billion in the economy. Commercial banks agreed to continue supporting businesses with short-term working capital needs to meet payroll and other short-term funding requirements at concessional rates between 5 to 6% to encourage businesses to remain open. The current average short-term financing rate ranges from 8 to 11%, making this reduction a significant step towards promoting business continuity. Commercial banks agreed to offer general concessional reduction of interest rate of 1% and up to 2% on customer loans below $10 million until December 30th, 2020. The existing lending rate ranges between 6.5 and 16%. Some commercial banks have agreed to apply special treatment to the interest accrued during the moratorium period, including, but not limited to, no capitalization, term extension, and foregoing of interest in special circumstances to loan with an outstanding balance of $10 million and below. Commercial banks have agreed to waive all bank charges, especially ATM, local merchant charges, to encourage more out-of-bank transactions as well as charges for transactions by senior citizens. These measures will not affect the soundness of our banking system and financial architecture. The measures outlined today are not intended to be the answer to all the potential consequences of COVID-19. As a government, we'll work tirelessly on implementing the objectives of our all-encompassing plan. We cannot do it alone. We need your help. We need your support. We look to you, the citizens, to play your part. I appeal to you, to all my fellow citizens, to follow and observe the COVID-19 measures. Wear a mask, always in public, 
and do so correctly. Practice physical distancing at least six feet apart if you must be in the company of others. Consistently practice good hand washing hygiene. Stay safe, everyone. God bless you and your families and our great country. Together, we'll overcome. Together, we'll build our country safer for all of us. Thank you very much.